got some past exam questions here on the year 13 enthalpy and entropy topic. So if you wanted to have a go at these, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So just click on that, download the questions, have a go and then play on for the answers. Okay, so this first question here, we've got to calculate the delta G in kilojoules per mole for the combustion of butane one all. So obviously what we've got to calculate or what we've got to use is the Gibbs equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to calculate delta H from this calorimetry information about the spirit burner experiment. And we're going to calculate delta S from that table of standard entropies. And then once we've got that, we can work out delta G. Okay, so there's my answer for delta H. I'll just quickly go through it. So we're obviously using Q equals MT delta T. The M, the mass of water in the can was 100 cm cubed, which is 100 grams. Specific heat capacity of water is 4.18. The temperature change was the difference between those two numbers there, 20.5. The answer will come out in joules, so it would have been 8569 joules. I've divided by 1,000 to put it into kilojoules. The moles of butane one all, so it's mass over MR, so it's the difference between these two masses is the mass of fuel burnt, MR of butane one all is 74. So there's that many moles of butane one all, and then delta H is the Q over the moles, and don't forget your minus sign because it's exothermic, the temperature of the water went up. So minus 2448 kilojoules per mole. Moving on to delta S now, so the formula, the sum of the enthalpies of the products, minus the sum of the enthalpies of the reactants. So there's the numbers in there, and you should get an answer of minus 252 joules per Kelvin per mole. And finally, to get delta G, remember we said it's delta H minus T delta S. The only catch here really is to make sure you put your um, delta S value into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole, because obviously your delta H value is in kilojoules per mole. T is 298 because it says that it's at 25 degrees C there. Okay, so the answer minus 2373. Question two, so you've actually got to do the calculation for this. So it's a bit mean for one mark. The information provided in the table was enthalpy changes of formation. So if you are using enthalpy changes of formation, it's products minus reactants. So we'd take the enthalpy changes of these, don't forget to quadruple that, and subtract from that the enthalpy changes of those. Remember to double that one, and you get plus 63, so the answer was D. Okay, so number three, the lattice enthalpy of calcium chloride can be calculated using three enthalpy changes below. It's obviously not the big full-blown born harbor cycles with the um, ionization energy and electron affinity and atomization. You can actually get lattice enthalpy from an enthalpy of solution cycle, which is why I've drawn that there. And you can see that to do that, we need the enthalpy change of solution and the enthalpy change of hydration of the positive and negative ions. So the one that we don't need is C, enthalpy change of formation. Question four, which equation is for the enthalpy change of formation of copper one iodide? So there's the ions in the uh, compound, copper one plus from that Roman one there, I minus, so the formula is CUI, so that gives us those as options. And then a reminder that it's got to be from elements. So the answer was D. Next question, we've got to write an equation including state symbols. So many times students just miss them out, even though it says it in the question. So hopefully you haven't done that. Um, so there's the equation there. So it's uh, metal plus acid gives salt and hydrogen. And remember that the acids are always aqueous, as are the salts. In terms of observations, you'll see I've highlighted excess hydrochloric acid there. So because of that, as well as seeing the bubbles of hydrogen, the magnesium would all dissolve. And the next part, how would the lattice enthalpies of magnesium chloride and calcium chloride differ? So you'll notice there I've written the ion formula above each of the words, so magnesium Mg2+, plus, etc. And I've also written up here the factors that affect 
the um, strength of lattice enthalpies. So it's down to ionic charge and ionic, not atomic, radius. Now you'll notice in both combinations of compounds, you've got two plus ions and one minus ions. So it's nothing to do with the charge for this question. It's all about the ionic radius. And you've got a common ion there of Cl minus, so we can forget about that. It's all down to the ionic radius of the magnesium 2 plus ion versus the calcium 2 plus ion. So in magnesium chloride, you've got a smaller ionic radius for the Mg2 plus. You'll therefore have stronger electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions in magnesium chloride. And therefore, its lattice enthalpy would be more exothermic. So you could literally just write three statements like I've done here. Mg2 plus has a smaller ionic radius than Ca2 plus. There's a stronger electrostatic attraction between the Mg2 plus and Cl minus ions. So therefore the lattice enthalpy for MgCl2 is more exothermic. So the question goes into a Born Harbor cycle now. I've zoomed out a little bit. I hope you can still see everything okay. Um, just so everything's on the screen. So we've got to write the correct letter in each box for the cycle. So first thing is this change here. That's the enthalpy change of formation of magnesium chloride because we've gone from um, elements to one mole of compound. So that is D. The next change here to here, the change there, look, magnesium solid to magnesium gas. So that's the atomization of magnesium. So that's E. The next one, is this one here. So that is going from Mg gas to Mg1 plus gas. So that's its first ionization energy of magnesium. So that's B. And obviously the next one up is going from Mg1 plus gas to Mg2 plus gas. That's the second ionization energy of magnesium. So that's F. And then the final one, we've gone from gaseous ions to the lattice. That's the lattice enthalpy, so that's obviously G. Explain the marking in that one. So all five correct, you got three marks. Four correct, got you two marks. And three correct, got you one. If, unfortunately, if you only got two or one of them in the correct place, you didn't get any marks. So moving on to the calculation now, you'll see I've put all the values in that we'd need, they're going to need to use in the uh, calculation for the lattice enthalpy. Um, just a, re a warning, I suppose, this one here, so you've got, you're producing effectively two moles of gaseous chlorine atoms, so the atomization value has to get uh, doubled because the value in the table is per mole. We've got two moles of uh, gaseous atoms in that step and likewise the electron affinity for chlorine you'll see we've got two moles of chlorine going to two moles of Cl minus ions the electron affinity is per mole so we double that one as well so the way I explain these is just sort of a basic Hess's law we've got two roots going from elements to the ionic lattice so root one let's say is that orange root and if I just change colour of the pen, go for blue. Root 2 is all of those changes there. And Hess's law basically says that the sum of the roots is the same because we're starting and finishing at the same place. So all we need to do is put these numbers into the calculation and then solve for G. Okay, so there's the numbers there. You can see I've highlighted for the roots. Um, the sum of the bracket is that 1864, so we obviously would just take that over and solve for question mark, which comes out at minus 2506.